My name is Kelly Papel. I'm Technical Manager for Invino Engineering, LLC, located in Tampa, Florida, USA. We are a domestic and international engineering firm focused on steam and condensate systems. Today I want to talk about steam balancing. Really it's the first step in steam system optimization. So if we're talking about optimizing the steam and condensate system, first step is doing a steam balance program. What is steam balancing? Well, it's a one or two page drawing. It provides key information on the steam system. It's an efficient way to gain knowledge, you know, steam generation, steam distribution, condensate recovery systems, the processes which are clients or the end users. Steam balance is always the first step in any steam system optimization and steam management program. This is the, always the first step. What are the expected end results to a steam balance program? Really, it's a dashboard for the steam and condensate system. The thing is, is that if I put you in a car from uh, the east coast of the United States and told you to go to the west coast of the United States, no dashboard, no GPS, would you get there? Uh, eventually, yes. It may be very painful. What a steam balance is, is, is this here, it is our dashboard. It gives us this information to, for us to drive the steam system efficiently. It also gives us the information to drive the system and increase the steam system thermocycle efficiency. And that is a very critical benchmark. So every plant needs to know or achieve the highest steam system thermocycle efficiency possible. And the only way you're going to be able to do that is have a steam balance. Why are steam balances not accomplished? A high percentage of time, it's fragmented. You have the boiler plant, the utility operation sitting over on one side, end users processed in their own uh, management side, steam distribution, whoever, somebody gets that, that doesn't want that, and the condensate recovery. Oh, by the way, you have condensate recovery. So it's very fragmented. The library may continue, uh, contain multiple CAD prints. It's not uncommon for us to go through 70 CAD prints before we finally come up with the steam balance diagram. Uh, it takes time and effort. The other thing that's created over the years by many different engineers using different formats, you know, AutoCAD, SolidWorks, uh, AutoCAD, PNID. And then the plants do not keep their CAD prints up to date, so then we have to feel verified to make sure the prints are up to date. So it becomes a very uh, tedious task to do, but the payback is tremendous. Developing and implementing a steam balance, you know, steam generation, distribution, and user requirements, and constant recovery is, can be an extremely challenging goal in any industrial plant operation. You know, because we have different sources of steam, different producers, we might be buying steam, might be using heat recovery boilers. The other thing, the end users require different pressures, different flows, uh, all this comes in and then we might throw in steam turbine operation for electric generation or drive units uh, for processes and that becomes a critical road for the steam balance because the thing is we don't want steam going through a pressure or letdown station and losing all that mechanical energy so and it's not a one-time thing a steam balance is always a continuous program this here happens to be a very large facility and this is a very simple print of a very complex system we have heat recovery boilers up here, utility boilers. The thing is, is, the process here was discharging the condensate into these tanks and they were using a huge quantity of air-cooled condensers to condense down the flash steam or losing all the thermal energy from the flash and just heating up air, which there was no use for it. Therefore, we looked at these condensate tanks here and this is just a partial print and bringing the uh, condensate and the flash back to the deaerator operation. First year savings, 25 million per year. I always put that in there, but the currency was rupiah. 
the real uh, said the savings was 1.7 uh, million U.S. dollars converted. The implementation cost was 1.3 million. My point is, they didn't know how to balance the system out until we did this balance and found that we could reroute piping back to the area and achieve the savings. So it was very, very critical to have a steam balance. Another example, this happened to be a very large food processing plant. We identified these processes here that could operate with a high, higher pressure condensate return system. Therefore, we could send the high pressure condensate and flash back to the deaerator. Now, the deaerator was going to be replaced for a number of other reasons. Therefore, we just upgraded the deaerator to a higher pressure operation. First year savings, $285,120 a year. Uh, implementation cost was $430,500. Ended up with a one year, uh, 1.5 year payback. So, you know, the, the balance cost, just for this here, the balance cost was roughly 28,000 US dollars. And you can see it, it paid for itself. But it took uh, time to get into the plant to understand the dynamics of the system. This here was a very large facility, and this is only a partial print. The steam balance started off with this here. Their current steam balance was a hand-drawn 8.5 by 11 uh, uh, drawing on a piece of paper, and basically ended up to go into this drawing here. What we're looking for is vents to atmosphere, which are a few other ones are not shown here and eliminating that venting of the steam, which is the venting steam is the biggest loss in any steam and concrete system. We just can't afford to vent steam to atmosphere today. Therefore, the savings was $895,520. The thing is, is to consume the steam that's being vented to atmosphere. They had no uh, use for low pressure steam However, we implemented a steam absorption units and we put in about 2,000 tons of steam absorption, which consumed the flash steam or the excessive steam that was being vented to atmosphere. Had a 2.2 year payback, but the plant was budgeted to put in electric uh, chiller units anyway, so we shared the cost with that. It still ended up a 2.2 year payback. But my point is, is that again, couldn't understand the dynamics of the system unless we did this steam balance. Without a steam balance, yeah, you know, we have a low steam system thermal cycle efficiency or we don't even know what a steam system thermal cycle efficiency is. We have energy losses. Basically, we're out here allowing steam to vent to atmosphere and heating up the birds as they fly by. Uh, energy loss emissions, you know, comes into safety, understanding where the safety valves are placed in the steam system is very critical. Process performance and understanding, you know, how to correct low steam quality. A balance gives us the ability to identify where we need uh, to improve the steam quality. End result of a steam balance. Simple, better understanding the steam and condensate system, ability to set a roadmap for changes that improve the system, production optimization, opportunity, of course, to increase reliability and improve energy efficiency. And with that, we reduce emissions. And of course, increase the steam system thermal cycle efficiency. Here is our website. Please come to our website. There's 64 different subjects, steam balancing only being one of them. And we continue weekly to update and add to our library content, either on technical papers or, or video presentations like this here, articles that we publish in major trade magazines. So every all information on our website is generic and uh, there's no vendor information. Partnership, short term, uh, STEAM engineering assessment, balance reliability and training, of course, and long-term full engineering support. Here is my contact information. You have any questions or we can be of assistance, please contact us. Have a great day.